Selamat datang, good day and welcome to the International and Domestic Virtual Colloquium or COMAT 2023 organized by the Institute of Teacher Education, International Languages Campus, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I'm Arifin and I'm the moderator for today's colloquium series. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on our live YouTube channel and Adweb TV for COMAT 2023. The theme for this year's colloquium is optimizing future-proof education. The goal for this colloquium is to provide the space for educators all over the world to discuss, share, and exchange views with fellow educators on topics related to education and how it is transforming globally. Indeed, through this colloquium, there is plenty to learn and expand our knowledge. Comat 2023 brings to you 18 series in the form of individual webinars with speakers from Malaysia and other countries. This is the fifth series of our virtual colloquium and I hope you will stay tuned till the end of this session. Before we start, let me lay out a few housekeeping matters. First, everyone who attends this webinar series will be given an e-certificate after each session. Therefore, do not forget to register your name. Make sure it is typed correctly and your email address is accurate. For viewers attached to the Ministry of Education Malaysia, your attendance will be recorded in SPL KPM. The registration link will be shared with the viewers about 30 minutes in the webinar. Second, we would love to hear from you during today's presentation. If you have any questions for our speakers, feel, feel free to send it through the chat box right here. The speaker will be answering questions at the end of the session. If you don't answer your question during today's webinar, we will be sure to follow up afterwards. And finally, we would like to encourage you all to share today's webinar with others through your social network. Now, allow me to introduce our speaker for today. Associate Professor Dr. Kasi Abu Bakar is currently attached to the Center of Research in Arabic Language and Islamic Civilization Faculty of Islamic Studies, University Kebangsaan Malaysia. Her field of expertise includes assessment, curriculum design and instruction of Arabic, Arabic language research and development in assessment, curriculum and instruction of Arabic. She taught at the University of Bengal, Turkey under Mevlana Exchange Program in 2019 and she was the module enhancer for methods in teaching Arabic, Open University of Malaysia in 2019 and 2020. She's also active in translation and interpreting, her experiences among which as consecutive interpreter for Tun Mahathir Mohammad for the OIC Summit 2003, consecutive interpreter for Najib Tun Raza for Malaysia Courtesy Call by Religious Leaders 2012, and consecutive interpreter for the Regional Dialogue on Malaysia's accession to the United Nations Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel, Inhuman, a degrading treatment or punishment 2019. She is also a trainer for Rush Model from 2006 till today. So, future proofing education through the eyes of the Islamic civilization studies is the topic for today's webinar. Education has played an important role in Islam from its inception owing to the importance of scripture and its studies in the Islamic tradition. Prior to the modern era, education would begin at a very young age with Arabic and Quranic studies. Beginning in the 11th and 12th centuries, madrasas were established in an effort to secure the support and cooperation of religious scholars. Madrasas were primarily dedicated to the study of Islamic law, but they also provided instruction in other fields. From the first series, we can gather that Future proof education prepares learners to become expert learners by equipping learners with knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values that enable them to adapt and contribute in an ever changing environment. Does this view differ from those of Islam? What is future proof education 
through the eyes of Islamic civilization studies? These are the questions that we will try to answer in today's webinar. So Prof, we are very excited to hear more about this topic. Without further delay, please welcome Associate Professor Dr. Kasia Rubaka. Prof, are you there? Uh, I think that we are facing uh, a bit of technical issues. Prof, are you there? We can't hear you. Okay, I'm sorry viewers, we are facing technical issues uh, in the studio. Prof, are you there? Clearly, because I can't hear you clearly. I don't know, something may not be very right with my internet. Okay, it's okay. Okay, I invite you, Prof. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me to uh, deliver this. Uh, this is the first time I am ever presenting on something uh, on civilization. Right, uh, the challenge anyway because. Um, in memory of my professor, Almarhum, Dr. Hassan Langulu, he was a study with him during the Kamal education and also during my PhD days. So it is from him that I learned much about the loss of the education. And if you allow me to share my PowerPoint now. Sure, go ahead. Right. Right. All right. Right. Mm -hmm. Hold on, hold on. And Are you okay, do you need any help there, Prof? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Okay. Yep, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you clearly here. We are still waiting for right. the slides. Right. So, the topic given to me. Yeah, it's uploading. Yeah, it's uploading. Okay. It's uploading. It's uploading. Okay. okay. Right. Uh, before, right uh, before you know, you know, uh, let me uh, let share with you some stories, with stories from my exposition background. Right. Um. When I was, I was so it's, so it's really. really Still uploading. Still uploading. It's okay. It's okay. You, you, you can you can start, so, um, uh, Prof. It's okay. Anyway, anyway. Yeah, I can speak. Yeah. When I was uh, sixteen, when I was sixteen, I went to school in College Islam Ilang. Now it is called College Islam Sultan Alam Shah. And um, we're talking about we're talking about teacher proof education right we're talking about teacher proof education and i trust that what my principal did then was it was almarhum uh uh mr he made it compulsory he made it compulsory for all students to learn computer programming okay 
Can, can you imagine? We already had uh, the mainstream education, and then we have another religious stream which consists of like things. And on top of that, we have to learn computer programming. And this, I guess, this is what the people now call as coding. But back then, we didn't know the word coding. We only learned computer programming. So we had to learn. We had to learn basic. We had to learn Pascal. Then we didn't have words, so we had to learn word star and all these things. So his idea was to make us uh, to ensure that we were, we were relevant to the demands of uh, higher education and to the job market in Facebook. It wasn't popular that programming was not yet popular in the 80s, but then we, we already started learning programming. Uh, very interesting and until and, and I kept learning more programming until I was doing my PhD. I um, I learned to do my PHP, um, uh, my my PHP, my SQL, and also uh, Visual Basic. Because the, the the training that he gave us in space, it's not about that we were able to do things with the programming, but how it trained our mind to be able to do coding and programming. So that was his idea of what future education future proofing was i guess right um allow me to uh okay i need to open my uh powerpoint and let for my own use okay i'm sorry that the internet is not so good this morning all right can you still see my okay. uh slides no you can't see my slides Right. Yeah, okay, we, we, we cannot see your slides. Okay, mm. never mind. Yeah, you can't see myself because it's still uploading and I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. So what happens now is uh, I will just speak. Okay, I will just speak. You will see me. And I... Um... Okay. Right. Uh, so what is... When I was given this topic, you know, future-proof education in the eyes of Islamic civilization... Okay, so I started to think about what is future proof? What is future proof? You know, um, then I start using the chat GPT. Ah, interesting. <laughs> so, chat GPT is a very uh, useful artificial intelligence tool uh, uh, for us to know about something, okay, for us to learn about something. So, I ask chat, explain future proof <laughs> education, <laughs> explain. So, <laughs> the answers I got was quite numerous. Um, uh, I will share with you the answer later. But what I will ask okay. now is, um, there are five questions that come to my mind. You know, what do we mean by future proof? Why are we future proofing? What are we future proofing? What are we future proofing against? And how do we future proof education? Okay. So these are the questions that came up to my mind. Okay. Right. Uh, still not loading. Okay. So uh, then I started searching about future-proof education, okay? So before I talk about what is future-proof education, I guess you all already have some ideas about what future-proof education is. But uh, there was a book. There's a book. There is a book uh, written by uh, Abdul Qadir al-Bakr. Uh, I'm not sure whether he's an Egyptian or a Saudi, but he's, he lives, he works and lives in Saudi. Uh, so, Abdul Qadir Bakar in 2017 wrote a book entitled uh, Ibn Zamanihi. Ibn Zamanihi is son of his time. Okay. It's, it's quite an interesting book, uh, uh, 88 pages, right? So, uh, he talked the future would be like. You know, what the future will, what will the future look like? Okay. So, he talked about the future in four dimensions. One is about uh, iman or faith, okay, iman. The other is about social. The other the other one is about lifestyle. And the fourth one is about the job market. Of course, it's more, this is not exhaustive, but these are the four that he dealt with in the book, right? So when he talks about what the future looks like for on the iman basis, okay, on the in the iman dimension, he's talking about how materialism takes over spiritual development, uh, uh, takes over social development. So he talks about materialism. He talks about uh, hedonism, you know, the more entertainments, okay? 
He talks about deviation from divinity. Okay, possible deviation. These are all uh, hypothetical. Okay, right. On the social dimension, he talks about uh, the challenge, the threat to respect. What kind of respect? He's talking about respect to elderly, respect to authority, respect to cultural values. All right. He's talking about the more space of individual freedom, take, uh, uh, dominating over uh, collectiveness of the society. You know, people, uh, he talks about uh, the changing nature of relationships. He talks about privacy. People don't care about holding uh, weddings to entertain, to entertain their relatives, but rather they will keep, for example, any wedding or any celebration within their four walls. Okay, uh, But he also talks about the good part of it, which is better communication. All right. And about lifestyle, in the lifestyle domain, he talks about temptations. He talks about uh, corrupts, hackings, uh, how one's will become necessities. He talks about the high expenses of the cost of living and the cost of education. He talks about the prevalence of more chronic diseases. He also talks about how recreation and sports become a daily must for people uh, in the future. Yeah. And with regards to the job market, he talks about the bodiless competition, about migration, people migrating from one place to another to seek provision to get a job. And he talks about more home-based home works, uh, how performance of excellence, and uh, which is much more expected from the, in the future, and this may be a, another source of stress. Uh, continuous professional development is a necessity. Uh, we will be less developing our our jobs require less development of our muscles. Rather, much automation will be in place. It talks about the need for ideas and practical solutions and ideas for invest investments for productivity. And he talks about how expertise will become more narrow and more narrow and more refined. Okay. These are some of the future that uh, Al-Bakar envisions. And I believe that much of this is already setting in. Although I, I think he didn't really look into, he didn't really talk about uh, the technological advancement in education uh, with, with regards to how AI has developed. Right. Um, I also looked into some other aspects of uh, what the future education is going to be look like. So today we are already, already talking about metaverse classrooms. In the past, we were talking about inclusive classroom and all these things. But now we are talking about metaverse classroom. And already in Malaysia, uh, we are some private universities are already into uh, using metaverse classrooms. So students get to go into the classroom virtually and you're choosing their avatars. This, Pros and cons, I do not know, but uh, because I've never experienced one myself, yeah, uh, it's one of the one of the positive aspect of it is students get to see close up with, with for example, planners. You know how it comes to their eyes. You know in their visual perception. All right. Uh, even without this metaverse, there are many, many uh, applications that we have been using. For example, Google Earth and all these things, uh, all these applications that uh, my students and I, we have enjoyed using them to travel through countries to see what the cultures are like in, uh, in the Middle Eastern countries, yeah, given that I'm a teacher of Arabic, right? Okay. And um, one of the things that uh, when we talk about the future, uh, which is actually already happening now and has been happening. It has been evolving. Uh, you know, uh, whatever we dreamt in the past. You know, we're talking. We were talking about. Um, um, we we were talking about. Okay, I think my slide is on. Okay. All right, my slide is on. Okay, this this is uh this was the program. Sorry, sorry. This was the things that I had to do when I was in school. Okay. All right. Okay, this is the multi metaverse classroom. Okay, we are talking about the metaverse classroom. All right. So whatever 
whatever we were dreaming last time, like we were talking, we were always wishing when we go through the traffic jams. Oh, I wish I had a flying carpet. I wish I had a flying car. But now this is already happening. Like on February 17 this year, Japan has already uh, flown its uh, uh, flying car in America. Okay. Uh, it started in 2020, I believe, that it flew in Japan and now in America. So this is going to be true. Okay, this is going to be true. I wish I had the money to buy that. Yep. Uh, however, technology is not just about uh, chat GPT. It's not just about uh, flying cars, you know, or uh, 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 high express train like the Shinkansen. But it is also about cyborg cybergazite. <laughs> cyborgization okay or biologically enhanced human superhuman and transhuman so if you remember uh in the past we were like we were amazed by the creation of a clone uh sheep dolly right but before dolly was even created years and years years before that we were already watching movies talking about cloning so whatever we're watching on hollywood today Okay, or, or or from the anime, uh, it may come true soon. You no, know, have this superhuman uh, because people are constantly trying to enhance the capability of human beings, right? So we might, we might, I do not know, we might be getting superhumans, we might be getting transhumans and everything. So all this technology, including chat GPT or including email or WhatsApp or uh, whatever view, uh, so um, they come with the pros and cons. They come with the pros and cons, okay? The, the, the positive and the negative uh, aspects uh, or byproducts of the apps itself, depending on how we use it. So everything is double-edged. All SWAT is double-edged. It can be good, it can be bad. A pen can be good, it can be bad. The technology can be put to good use, it can be put to bad use, okay? Right, so, so this is what, um, okay, what I can't even see my own, wait, okay, right. Okay, this is slide nine. So, People are talking about you no know, uh, digital digital citizenship and all these technological advancements. They say that given that technologies are constantly changing, especially these days and in future, it might be said that those responsible for teaching digital citizenship are shooting in the dark while trying to hit a moving target. It's constantly moving, right? Okay, so um, now uh, the future in Islam. Okay, I wouldn't talk about this. This is so <laughs> philosophical. Uh, all right. So what, what do we mean by future proof now? Okay. Future proof. Uh, if I look at the Collins dictionary, it says that if you future proof something, you design or change it so that it will continue to be useful or successful in the future if the situation changes. So what we are trying to say, if we future proof education, then our education system will continue to be useful or successful in future, even if the situation changes. Okay. It will Right, so um, so I I also do you know, I I remember, remember I asked Chat GPT what future proofing means. Okay, it's about ensuring that they learn a wide range of skills. And they means the learners learn a wide range of skills or capabilities that will allow them to thrive in increasingly complex global workplaces. Something will continue to be useful or successful in future, even when the situation changes. And I heard from the director of I, uh, the IPG of Komat uh, that the education needs no major replacement. All right, no immediate or major replacements. So uh, there are various uh, ways to look at the definition of future proof. Um, we will get back to this question later at the end of the talk. Okay, uh, I was asked to talk about the Islamic civilization. Uh, you know how does how what is the perspective of Islamic civilization towards future proof education? Now, when I talk about this, I cannot run away from talking about the philosophy of Islamic education. I believe in philosophy. Not that I'm a philosopher, but I believe philosophy is the way. To go the philosophy without the philosophy, we do not have a firm rooting of a firm grounding in uh, our our culture, our worldview, right? So, in the Islamic philosophy, uh, or the philosophy of Islamic education, all right, 
um, education can see both can be seen from both the individual and the societal perspective okay the individual when we look at individuals we are talking about the cultivation of potential so that is what education is the cultivation of potentials okay but when we look at education from the societal uh, perspective we are talking about cultural transmission okay so that is what education is uh, that is uh, right so um, and we need to look into what are the aims of education in the islamic uh, uh, philosophy or islamic civilization right so the aims of education are uh, to ensure that human being executes his uh, purpose of life which is the servitude to allah to be a good servant to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for self-realization of himself right so uh and i looked into several books about the i aims of education in islam okay for al abrashi for example talks about uh the aims of education in islam is to equip equip students equip learners about akhlaq, uh, uh the the moral about morality akhlaq, to enable them to live in the transient and eternal lives okay we're talking about the transient lives here here and now we are talk also talking about the akhirah okay about what happens after we die the eternal life that we are going to go so this goes in line with our belief about the existence of dunya and akhirah about the transient world and the eternal world all right and hereafter all right and the provision to enable them to seek provision and the preservation of uh, benefits of the world so in islam there is the concept of tasheer that allah has created all the other creatures in the world to serve the humans right so we have the concept of tasheer so we have some kind of siada of governance over other creatures over the world over our environment over the animals over the plants for example okay uh, what another aim of education in islam is to uh, stimulate curiosity and inquisitiveness and also to equip students with vocational competence okay such that they will be able to seek provision such that they will be able to bring about a better life for themselves and for humanity right now al jamali for example talks about aims of education in terms of individual responsibility in terms of social responsibility uh indeed uh, individual means that uh, him a, a person to himself okay and a person to his society it also talks about the a person to the environment to the world and about and not to forget and the the, the ultimate aim of education is about a person's responsibility towards god right uh, Ibn Khaldun, for example, talks about uh, some of some of the aims that Ibn Khaldun mentioned in his book Al Muqaddima. It's about to equip learners with religious knowledge. Okay, that means uh, about akidah, about faith, about rituals, about rites, and everything. Okay, and to equip learners with akhlaq, with good morals, good conduct, virtues. To equip learners with social skills to equip learners with the vocational skills, to equip learners with the intellect necessary for them to live here, uh, to, 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 to pursue their career, to pro also to provide learners, to equip learners with the arts and aesthetics that includes music, drawing, uh, uh, po poetry, for example, literature and all this, okay? So I think what Ibn Haldi is the only one that I noticed talks about the need for arts and aesthetics. <coughs> okay, now about the classification of knowledge. Okay, now we talk about the what education is. We talk about the aims of education. Now we're talking about the classification classification of knowledge. Okay, so uh, Al Ghazali uh, sees uh, knowledge as Sharia and Aqliya primary which is quran sunnah ijma ulama the consensus of the ulama and about sira also about the history of islam uh, secondary will be about the fiqh uh, about how uh, fiqh and also jurisprudence and about the heart heart is made probably is about the tasawwuf about knowing the heart uh, 
being able to purify the heart is a secondary knowledge within uh, the sharia and some prelude uh, also maybe we call as ilmu alat eh? ilmu alat oh, a language and grammar for example is a nece is necessary for us to reach out to the uh, for us to accumulate the other knowledge okay? and also uh, concludes with the quran and the ilm aqliya is the what is acquired worldly and ukhrawi for the world and for the hereafter so that will include uh, medicine and engineering technical knowledge uh, farming and all this stuff and also about uh, aqida also about uh, what we need to know in order for us to do to for us to have a better life in the hereafter a good life in the hereafter and also about the knowledge of uh, necessity okay uh, in general ibn khaldun distinguish between uh, the, the nakli knowledge and also the akli knowledge the nakli knowledge is what we get from the quran sunnah and the primary islamic sources and the akli knowledge is uh, knowledge like the medicine engineering and all this stuff right okay uh it is important for us to remember that uh the human being was created to be a servant to god and to be a khalifa which is to be the vice chairman or the god representative on earth that means to make the world good and to make humanity good and also as uh ummah now in in executing a person's duty as a khalifa siada is very important siada what is siada siada means governance the knowledge the knowledge to uh, manipulate the knowledge to govern the resources around us so that is called a siada right so um and when we talk about technology when we talk about technology we are actually talking about uh, a tool to enable this governance to take place all right because with this tool we can govern and uh, or manipulate i mean in a good sense <laughs> to maneuver whatever around us to serve mankind all right so that is the concept of siada uh, a simple classification of knowledge would be uh anything better understandable is about religious knowledge okay uh scientific knowledge practical knowledge okay right linguistic knowledge and also spiritual knowledge so now uh, where does technology comes in why i talk about technology is because when i read about future proof education uh, in many many reports by the unicef or unesco or for whatever or many other sources much emphasis is given about uh, making learning relevant to the challenges of technology in future all right so uh so i find that there is this obsession about technology okay so when whereas technology comes in only in uh in uh as at the or also as a ilmu amali as a as a skill right so uh according to hasan langulung okay uh, uh he uh, i took this from uh, an article published by Hassan Langul, a chapter published by Hassan Langulu in 1991 when he was his view was sought about uh, technology uh, information technology this was the heyday of the information technology 1990s right so uh, he, he considers uh, information technology then as ilmu alat ilmu untuk mengetahui ilmu lain so to him to him keterampilan our skill bukan ilmu skill is not knowledge in itself but skill is a tool to understand or to learn to acquire other knowledges so this is uh, his view right uh, in the in this article he also talks about the need to distinguish between genuine need and created need okay uh what we have now is uh i i, I mean i i go to shops you now sometimes i look for a good computer chair for my table well well for for doing typing and everything and i find that oh my god the gaming gaming furnitures are so expensive so i say and and this i use for gaming so i uh, okay I, i'm from i'm old school i don't belong to the young generation 
But I was like, oh, how important is gaming to this youngsters you know to my sons for example i have seven children by the way and how important is gaming to these youngsters you know to the extent that they can spend thousands not just on the computer that we use for work only to say they spend thousands on the computer table that like, should we be able to do it to do like this and on the computer chair that we have never thought it would reach that price we would never thought that we could be we would be using a computer chair that costs about one thousand know, for example so is this really a genuine need or is it just a created need you know right uh hasan langul also distinguishes between explosion of knowledge versus explosion of ignorance so that was a time when the buzzword was uh information uh, technology and the buzzword was uh, explosion of information okay and he says that along with exclusion of niche can also comes explosion of ignorance and this is what we're getting today from the netizens you know everybody's commenting on something that nobody can uh, people don't bother to verify the information that they get people don't bother to give uh, views based on authorized information People are just saying things, writing things uh, from their heads, from their minds. Okay, and so what? Um, all these advancements, like I said, it has pros and cons. So, to what extent do we need these kinds of advancement, and how should we use them? So, according to Asan Langgong and also all uh, Muslim scholars, to join kemajuan, the the purpose of any advancement must be uh, related to the purpose the raison d'etre of existence our human existence itself so we have seen just now that the raison d'etre of human existence is to be a servant to god to be a khalifa a vice to the earth to earth to the world then to return to him to to god all right and to be part of the ummah okay so uh let us look at about technological advancement in islamic civilization okay uh, people say, oh, look at the Muslim countries, they are so backward. Why are they so backward? Okay, uh, the answer, the debate around that is very long. That I will not uh, talk about it here. You may read about them in probably in the Muslim Mind, Volume 1 and Volume 2 by Abdul Rauf. But uh, I was just, uh, uh, today I will just be talking about uh, uh, technological advances that has happened in Islamic civilization before. Okay, so... Um, uh, oh, this is moving and moving. Okay, now, uh, what do you see here is uh, we call um, jam ai or, or we call it water clock. Okay, the technology is based on purely water. So this was invented by uh, an Algerian, I believe, and this is this water clock can be seen in uh, is available only in Fez. This kind of water clock, I know there are other water clocks, but this kind of water clock only available in Fes. It's called Darul Magana or Darul Makana uh, in Fes. Okay, so um, so this is technology, and 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 the 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 thing that I would like to uh, share here is, I find that most of the technological advancements, uh, the technological tools used in Islam, are very much. Uh, coupled with the aesthetics aspect, okay, aesthetics aspect of it. So you see, this is a clock. It's just a clock, but how aesthetic the the decoration is, the ornaments are. All right. Um, this is Al Jazari. Al Jazari invented many, 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 many inventions. Okay, uh, many different kinds of clocks and uh, or for the for the palace, but he also invented uh, various inventions for the farmers, okay, to improve the quality of work, their productivity, their life, for example. So he he, he created many automated uh, automated talks, and uh, uh, for example, this instrument is for taking the ablution, will do for prayer, and it's always almost always 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 combined with aesthetics and also humor. All right. Uh, for entertainment as well. So Al Jazari is um, is called the father of robotics, the master of water and father of robotics. Okay, that's what Al Jazari is. Now, uh, I believe this elephant clock was once uh, shown, uh, was once displayed in uh, petroscience uh, some time ago. 
Uh, okay. And this is art. Okay, remember Ibn Khaldun talks about the necessity for arts. Okay. Now, the Islamic art is very different from the Roman art or something. Like if you go to the palaces in Europe, uh, including in uh, the in, including in Alhambra, uh, Spain, uh, the not the during the Muslim uh, era, but the ones built after the Muslim era, what you find is uh, Islamic arts, okay? Uh, with all the walls, all the walls, not a single part is not uh, decorated or carved, right? So Islamic arts in itself is about bringing, uh, giving, uh, allowing us to enjoy the aesthetics at the same time, whatever technological advancement or arts has to be related to bringing us closer to God, okay? To bring us closer to God. For example, the clock that uh, Al Jazeera, uh, that that was the water clock that I showed just now, was used in the mosque, was placed in the mosque. Okay, that is to the clock is to bring us closer to the times of salah. The wudu automated wudu machine, for example, is to bring us closer to God. Okay, to help us take wudu. Okay, before the salah. And the arts, okay, if you look at the arts in Alhambra and in other parts of the Malaysia, uh, of the Muslim architecture, uh, La ilaha illallah, so all the, the writings on Alhambra, this is taken from Alhambra, okay, is to bring us closer to God, okay, to bring us closer to our creator. Even if you see these geometric patterns, okay, they are not just uh, in blind, you know, you see they are based on circles, circles. And what do these circles mean? The circles mean that this is infinite. We are talking about the infinite nature of God. Okay? So, uh, there is philosophy even in our arts. So, and we will not have like, for example, naked women or naked men or, or in all these kinds of arts because that does not bring us to God. In fact, that takes us further away from God. Okay? So, so every aesthetic aspect or every technological advancement in our view in the muslim perspective should bring us closer to our creator uh should bring us closer uh, should improve our lives as it should cultivate our potential and should bring bet a betterment to humanity okay now what are the reasons for all these creations and technological advancements and arts you know it's curiosity it's inquisitiveness, it's creativity, it's also born out of necessity, all right? So, it is important that we remember all these words, you know, curiosity, inquisitiveness, creativity, because however we pursue our education in future, we cannot neglect these uh, words, these, these uh, concepts, okay? We need to, yesterday we heard, I mean, the day before we heard about collaboration, we heard about the need to give students uh, uh, the experience to uh, of collaborative learning, of uh, digital learning. Well, don't forget, we need to implant, uh, we need to uh, inculcate in our students, uh, stimulate and promote curiosity and inquisitiveness and creative creativity in our learners. Okay, that is the way to go forward. Okay, and this is being mentioned by all of the Muslim scholars who talk about education. Okay. Okay. Now back to the questions that I posed earlier in the uh, uh, proofing education. Okay. Right. Uh, what is this? Ah. Oh. Uh, what is this? Did you do an example? There's something that doesn't belong here. Okay. Uh, oh, okay, it's blocked. Okay, so uh, prosperous life. So, what or who? Okay, so actually, what is it that we are future proofing, or is it who that we are future proofing? Okay, so we are actually education is dealing with people, it's about building the future generation. So, what we are actually future proofing our education, or who we are actually proofing, are the learners. We are actually protecting the learners. Okay, against what? Okay, so what for what? Okay, what? So that they have a prosperous life, so they have content soul. Now, that's the reason why I will be talking about what is content soul. Okay, right. Okay, 
Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, hold on, okay. Okay, so just now I was talking about that each technological advancement or each change comes with it the pro, the, pro, the, the good and the bad, right? The good and the bad. Okay, now what we need to nurture in our learners is um, at the end of the day, what we want is to produce people learners and who have become people of the citizens of the world or will become part of the ummah part of the world is to provide or to nurture contentment in their souls content with themselves and god content with them okay so this is from the quran okay all right so that's contentment, okay? This contentment uh, is something very spiritual, all right? Uh, I don't have it here on my slide, but uh, if you look at Al-Farabi's uh, uh, book about, uh, I can't remember the title of the book, but he's talking about the uh, city, about uh, what is an ignorant city. One of the descriptions of the ignorant city is that people are rushing all the time, trying just to make ends meet, you know, and they just engage in whatever conducts, even if it's against the religious uh, morality. Okay, so uh, and this, I mean, this rushing, all these kinds of rushing is not something that gives contentment to the soul. All right, rushing to get things done. Uh, and without knowing actually why they're doing what they're doing it's just to get food just to uh fulfill their lust uh fulfill their greed and all these things it's not going to reach lead to contentment of the soul you get this much money and you want more you get this much and you want more you have, your business is prospering this much and the next quarter it must grow more so there's a lot of expectations so we have to ask what i'm not saying that these are wrong i'm just saying that while we are doing all these things is this going to lead to contentment or not all right okay. uh doctor we are approaching uh 11 o'clock so i think we can you know, try mm -hmm. to wrap up <laughs> yeah 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 okay uh did you okay i will wrap up now uh for okay i can't see my slides is it is it still on or has it been no, no, it's only us. Okay, never mind. <laughs> okay, it's only us. Okay, so it's all right. So what? I, uh, so we are talking about. Uh, and then, and then, what is another thing that we need to know? So we are talking about changes that will happen and changes that will happen rapidly. So it comes with tests. Okay. So and it is, uh, God has already created us for it, for us to know that our life itself is a test okay for that so that god knows who is the the best doers amongst us right so yep 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 yep, yep. i'm going to wrap up okay and i said about that there is pros and cons of everything okay i said about there is pros and cons of everything but the thing is god has also given us the capacity to choose okay and guided him on the two paths of good or evil so okay so what are the intentions of Sharia? Okay, right. So where we have a certain technology or certain changes going on, we have to think about whether this is going to the use, how we're going to benefit from it. Is it going to be, are we going to use it for the good or evil? And the intentions of Sharia. So what are we protecting? Okay, we are protecting faith, religion, life, lineage, the nasa, intellect, and the property. This is this is what we are protecting. All right. Okay. And we are also protecting our future generations from any threats that threaten the, any of the SDGs, okay? Peace, that includes peace and justice. No point of one country having so many PhD holders and yet that country is actually killing their neighbours, the children of their neighbours, the elderly and all, okay? So there's no point. What kind of world is that, right? So... Uh, you know what I'm talking about. So some solutions that Al-Bakar and also Hassan Langulung uh, provided was whatever our education is in the next time, we have to maintain faith, a relationship with God. That has to be 
part of education maintain resilience we have to have resilient we have the, the education has to build resilience remember that life is a test technological advancements in itself are a test uh expectations from the in the job and career are a test so resilience has to be built we have to build creativity inquisitiveness positive attitude practical skills and don't forget strong family bond happy individuals can only come from happy families you know <laughs> or, or a happy social circle okay so this is my conclusion so when we talk about uh, revamping education for the future proof okay so we need to be cut uh, to me we need to come from a philosophy we cannot just go everyone's doing this we are doing this everyone's doing robotics we are doing robotics okay i'm not saying it's wrong we have to do robotics but it has to be guided by the philosophy of education in terms of preserving the human the world his relationship to the world and his relationship to god okay so we can think about just i heard uh, people saying so do we have to replace our education i think we still have this matrix to look at what has to remain anything that protects the happiness of the individuals the cultural values the virtues the religion has to stay okay what needs to increase what needs to decrease and what needs to be removed from the educational system okay i end this with a quote from hasan langulo uh, who's saying that the message of islam is absolute kekal yes yes uh, and also kekal uh, and same eternal okay but how how we execute these messages can change according to time and place all right so whatever it is the humans uh must must remember that whatever he does it has to go to what god wants from us he has to lead us back to god that's it thank you very much uh and do not forget that baraka should be part of learning so this is one forgotten aspect thank you assalamu assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh uh, okay thank you uh prof uh, dr kasi abu bakar for the sharing i mean i think prof has a lot to talk about but because of our time constraint we need to stop now but it's okay uh yeah, then. do we have any questions okay uh i think uh, we are running out of time so uh if uh, there are any questions we will be sure to get back to you later so uh that concludes uh, our webinar session for today okay the takeaway that, can, uh, that i can get uh, from this webinar is that we need to understand what is the purpose okay of us being here in this world okay as a servant of god okay and our education must not contradict that you need to be happy okay and our soul need to be happy so if education goes against this there is mm -hmm. a need for change am i right both yeah yeah okay <laughs> okay okay thank you okay so uh i hope all of our viewers enjoyed this session. I would like to once again thank you, uh, Prof. And not to forget our technical team here in Institute of Teacher Education, International Languages Campus, uh, Mr. Satya, uh, Mr. Daini, and Mr. Fazi, who are with us in the studio, and uh, Mr. Hafiza, and the team from Educational Technology and Resources Division, the RSTP, Ministry of Education Malaysia, the producer, Dr. Suras, studio director, Mr. Mama Azian, Webmaster, Mr. Mamak Farid, streamer, Ms. Nurain, and to all of our viewers, please do not forget our next webinar series will be let will be held later today at 2:30 p.m. Malaysian time. This is going to be the sixth of the 18 series. We will have Dr. Nurazi Rani, Deputy Head of the Department, Department of Planning, Research and Innovation, Institute of Teacher Education, International Languages Campus. Again, thank you all. Jumpa lagi. See you again. Goodbye from Malaysia.